through some of the uh hold that thought because uh, we're it? alive oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that in a second welcome to panicle podcast for geeks a show about good friends hanging out talking about the stuff we all love our guest today is mike chung who has something to say so go ahead and say it man <laughs> oh no uh, i was just um, so andrew and i um you know we we, go, we went back to all the way from uh, when we worked on battleborn and then yeah. we went um into were you were you working with us on 1000 uh, you worked a, a bit on the graphic novel yeah i, I did Part like thing he called me in to help out like on coloring some stuff here and there i guess you guys are like behind a little bit out, like on mm -hmm. uh, so i didn't do a whole lot of it i i literally only did like two pages right and then i, I helped you up. guys out with that that one video game that was like Attack on Titans, but it was like orcs. Do you remember that? Uh, yes. Um, did it start with an... It wasn't very good, uh, from yeah. what I remember. <laughs> this was um, for like the same the company like as for Gearbox? That was so, for so Iron what Galaxy. It was, right? so what, well, so what it was is it was through this... Uh, Alan, you know who Sanford Green is, yeah? Yes. Okay, so he started a company called Secret Saw. Mm. which was a collection of artists to do like these like kind of weird like I, I always thought of it as like weird mercenary jobs kind of thing <laughs> of like filling in random things here and there so th that's how we all got together doing a uh, battleborn because oh. sanford uh sanford through his company secret sauce got contracted by gearbox to work on the cinematics for it mm -hmm. and then i honestly don't i came in Jay was the one that recruited me for that. Uh, uh, I'm assuming it was Jay and LD that pretty much did most of the recruitment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because by you, the time I joined, scattered. you guys were all, well, all yeah. together. Yeah. All I yeah, remember yeah, about yeah. Battleborn was my you know, I had a friend who worked at Gearbox too. He worked on, I think he worked on Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 2. Nice. And I think he was part of the Battleborn. He was a coder, so he did like some of the, mm. uh, I don't know exactly what he did. I remember he did like backgrounds and stuff too. But I remember nice. seeing Battleborn thinking uh, at the same time. I thought, what's that other game? Um, crap. The the one that really took it away um, by Bio. Uh, Borderlands? No, Blizzard makes it. Um, Overwatch. Because it oh, had the same vibe, Oh, yeah. Vibe, so right? Battleborn came out. Um, I remember it came out uh, and Overwatch was oh, having right like before the beta Overwatch? Test. Yeah. yeah it, it was like on the same day. That it was like on the, the same test. time, yeah. So it's it like, like, this is not going to go was, well. <laughs> I remember you know telling my so friend like, that too. I'm like, this is not gonna end well for you guys if you don't just take this no. thing to market, you know. It's true. No, I do remember like most people are kind of like whatever with the uh gameplay. And I actually remember the gameplay not getting a whole lot of coverage. Our cinematic got coverage though. We got a fucking Kotaku article. <laughs> it did. Yeah. Um Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where the guy even was like, the game's all right, but this cinematic is awesome. And I was like, damn right it is. <laughs> there you go. We did good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh uh yeah so like uh just as a background so mike is a um he works in the animation industry he's a color in the projects i've worked with him on he's been a color stylist and a color uh script uh yeah, but you've done artist. you've done like other yeah you've done other stuff yeah. as well like you said you you uh, do background paintings and then uh yeah. uh paint do you ever do like uh uh flats or uh, colors for characters as well like um yes uh, um, filling in oh for those um less so of that more for like whenever <clears throat> master needs a hand sometimes i do <clears throat> that um funny thing when uh when we were doing a uh, legend dragon ball tale um i feel like it's kind of weird to say but like like um there was like two shots where i actually got to animate the light shapes and oh really yeah, yeah. So it's the one. There's the one shot where um, Broly is like sort of firing um, his yeah. energy blast at Vegeta, and Vegeta does the flips and stuff around. Um, I animated those light shapes, and um, it's funny. So it's kind of weird to say that I might have actually been the only other person to animate anything <laughs> besides Legend, Nasser. besides Nasser. But it was so tiny. It's so tiny. It's like two shots. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, there yeah, you go, cool. though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I remember, yeah. Well, we could, we yeah. could start right in on Legend if you want to talk. I figured like we would talk mainly about like color scripting and uh, color styling stuff because 
that was always interesting to me with animation stuff because I always I always know what it is, but I don't have <clears throat> I don't have any like work experience with it. And then my only mm -hmm. real experience with it is like you know seeing it in, like a art of animation book, or whatever, and they yeah. show like all the boards and stuff. You're kind of like if you wanted to, I forgot to there's mention not as much if, context. <laughs> if you wanted to share a screen, um, I think you can on this call. You would have to share your screen on the call, and then I would just make it okay. Uh, the, the main yeah, screen on my call. We could actually yeah. just because I have my Photoshop open. And, sure. So if uh, you just share that screen, it should show up as a fourth window here, and then yeah. I can make it the the big screen and you can do your thing. All right. Be let's... Before we get before we get too far into it, did you mm -hmm. excuse me? Did you uh, do all the backgrounds in watercolor and gouache, or just no, a few? no, just a few, just a few. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I was I was yeah. surprised when I saw that you actually did some in watercolor and gouache. Yeah, um, I mean, I would have loved to do more in uh, watercolor gouache, uh, but you know, like in terms of like how much time we had, it was like okay, like some of these I just wanted to bang him out, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, there were a few that actually um, ended up uh, not so even you reused. Uh, I think the sky shot maybe two or three times, but I painted that. I think I did some small touch-ups in Photoshop, but um, yeah, most of that was, uh, it was actually an ordeal that, um, it was like a blue sky image. Actually, let me see if I can find it. But Was uh, that a, was mm -hmm. that like poster color or was it just like regular gouache that you can get into mo at most art stores? It was um, watercolor and gouache. <clears throat> and what's funny about that was I mixed, I had to mix like three <laughs> colors of watercolor in order to get mm. the sky color, like oh that, that, that particular type of blue. And I was like, oh my yeah. God, this is like, like this is taking a while to like get it right and stuff like that. And you know, me, I haven't like, th like this was just uh, one of those projects where we were kind of like, like because uh, we weren't very, uh, I guess, strict with like a timeline per se. So it's like, oh, mm -hmm. we can try this. Why don't we try this? Why don't we, uh, like I've always wanted to do some traditional mm -hmm. painting on, uh, on background so it's like okay let's let's try one or two first you know and then we uh saw how that went and uh but yeah the that sky shot was was something else because it's like i remember i um i think i found a watercolor tube that was like oh wait this from daniel smith like they had like this this uh, particular um, tube of color that looked like like the perfect blue that i wanted it's like okay this uh. It was really nice, <clears throat> and I got it, and the consistency <clears throat> was so difficult to work with. Like it was like jello; it would like go, you would you would it would go oh. onto the paper, and then like whenever you moved it, it would like move the whole thing, and then it just left a very very light stain on the paper instead of like a nice like opaque kind of thing. And I was like, man, like. That I, I just watch. couldn't figure out. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to work it, so then I ended up going back to the like mixing three colors and doing that. So that that was the Daniel Smith watercolor that was like that. that was yeah, the but um, but I mean, like I've had some good, like really good um, experiences with uh, Daniel Smith as well, though. Like they have like a really really nice like green, like emerald green kind of thing, which I thought was like this feels like a Ghibli green kind of, you know, like yeah. grass kind of thing. I was like, oh, this is, and the pigment was really nice. So I, I just got, uh, is it 18 or 24? I can't tell from here. 18 colors. I got an 18 color set of uh, poster color from a uh, knicker. Oh, um, yes. Had not even, thing is though, it's like, I'm, I'm fucking awful because I've not used it yet at all. Like, the way mm -hmm. that most people use poster color to do like, you know, uh, Ghibli style backgrounds and stuff. Mm -hmm. Most of my, here, I'll, I'll show you real quick and then we can get into sure, it. Yeah. Get into it. But like, yeah, most mm -hmm. of my, most of the uh, poster color I've done is like this, where I've like decanted it with uh, oh. like half a mix of water. And right. I actually use it for uh, underpaintings because then I'll, oh, I'll okay. apply like a whole wash over it to uh, cover the entire panel. And then I'll uh, pull out uh, oh, using water screen large. That's what we were. You were doing that with the skulls that one time, right? Basically. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Cool. Here, let so me make this that, screen large so everyone I, can see this background. That's the main reason I uh, 
I <clears throat> that's the main that's the main way I've used it yet. I've yet to use it like how you see like some YouTube people doing it with uh right uh, straight, like you know the mixing up. wells and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the so, bit I've seen is yeah. like they, it would actually solve that mm. easily. Like I've worked a little bit with um the uh knicker poster color actually like just last year i like i bought a small set and then i was trying it out they're surprisingly easy to work with like yeah they are well, that's good they're to know. so i haven't buttery. opened mine yet oh <laughs> i've been staring God. at it <laughs> you know what the, you know what the cool thing is alan about it is um so like you know watercolor watercolor and gouache if you I have found like if it's not stored in like a jar or in like even in like a Ziploc baggie that kind of just keeps it so moisture can't just leach out constantly, um, they'll eventually dry out. And then you're tr then there'll come a day where you're trying to get out some color or whatever and things not coming out. And you're like, oh God, I got to cut open the tube or whatever. The uh, poster color is awesome because it can dry out entirely. And then all you do is just add a little bit of water in it let it sit and kind of reconstitute itself and then you have it, it it's workable again yeah hmm. i was amazed by that like i was like oh this is just soaking up like a sponge and it's like yeah and it becomes gooey again and i was like wow yeah okay. yeah i'm like, still messing with that acrylic wash and um just ink washes the mm. this, um, fw ink they make like these neon neon inks that i like oh nice but I did get the I did get the same poster <clears throat> paint that Andrew has. I just nice. I guess I just need to dive in. I'm not you know I'm primarily digital, so traditional stuff gives me the. Mm. I saw some of your work. I like the use of the neons. Actually, thanks. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, no, it, it really makes me reminiscent of like like how I f like that same feeling that I felt from the mood of like hyper light drifter that kind of thing. Awesome. You know, yeah, like, I like eighty synth wave, and that's kind of what I'm aiming at. So nice. That gonna say that, that that's exactly up Alan's yeah. alley. Yeah, <laughs> if you if you got it, then I'm doing my job right. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had this, um, this last piece. I did a piece in um, Scott's class of this. Uh, mm. I, I, I'm doing some pirate stuff, so I did a pirate. It's, that's a character design class. But one of the uh, my friends who was helping me out was like, keep bringing the saturation levels down i'm like i, I can't man it's just not i'm not built that way you know like i, I need it say, yeah, yeah i need I this to pop to, off the page I, I i think i've tried to do that with you too and it, yeah just eventually it was like you you eventually it like eventually made it work yeah. i have no idea how <laughs> i i think i'm i might have issues with the way i see color <laughs> like some people at the show I did last week, where like, how do you pick your colors? And like, sometimes I look at pieces I like, and I color pick colors from it because I'm like, I like this pink or I like this purple. But sometimes mm -hmm. I just mess around and see things. And a lot of other times I will look at, I look a, I look at a lot of '80s posters and, and '80s like mm -hmm. animation and, and a lot of '80s. I grew up in the '80s, so that's like my vibe. I know it right really well. I had a lot of that's No Fear time. shirts growing up, so nice. That's so what actually, are we looking uh, at here on, in a flash? Yeah, what, you know, what's this? Oh, this. Uh, this oh, is the painting. Doing. This is the painting that I was talking about where, like, I really wanted to get that blue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. And this was, like, the one of the first paintings that I really, like, went in and just, like, tried masking fluid. And then, like, I don't even remember what brand it was, but uh, it wasn't perfectly masking. So I like some of the blue there. I had to paint back out with like white and stuff like that. So, but you know yeah. that was just me like experimenting and stuff like that. Th that was like the uh, liquid latex kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. that yeah. Would. yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. you know what's funny yeah. is um, we have uh, Alan and I have another friend, uh, Justin Donaldson. Yeah. Uh, oh yes. Okay. Yeah, you know his work. Yeah. Um. Actually, I've I was taking his gouache course. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do. I've yeah. got, I've got I was, access to that too. Very good painter. I'm gonna mention yeah. uh, how he paints clouds. Like, do you, you know that he does like that? Uh, I which I've seen other. I saw um some Ghibli artists do it as well. So I was wondering like how much of a uh, actual technique it was, where they basically create like a kind of like an isolation layer first of of uh, titanium white mm -hmm. or zinc hmm. white, something like that. Uh, of gouache underneath all their other colors. And this is mainly for like 
skies and all that. And then they'll do their sky gradations and then pick <clears throat> out the uh, blue to to basically let the clouds show back through. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I've seen like a video about like that. I didn't know that it was like an underlayer of like white. Yeah. I think that's kind of similar to what um my uh, you know when I make my big the big metals you've seen Andrew I get them made by a photography studio and they do a base layer of white first and then mm. all the other colors get laid on top and then the, whatever I want to be the brightest is usually the thinnest layer so that white's coming through mm. and um people keep thinking I wonder if that's like the same that's the same logic then for that it's probably it's exactly like, what it is. Maybe. Because it is different from just like doing a single wash and trying to lift it off, right? Because you get like the transparency and like the paper comes sure. through. But it's like if it's like a layer of paint underneath and then you actually just sort of like, like it actually like the consistency is going to be like even kind of like it's going to be the same consistency then. So I think I it prevents like wetter washes or like watercolor from like seeping into the page, so you can lift it out a little bit more. But on it, like mm -hmm. I, I've never tried it, so I've never seen like firsthand like, oh, this is how it works. It's always mm -hmm. I've seen it like a few videos here and there, just kind of pieced together. Like, huh, you can do it this way, and it's apparently like the main way I've seen a lot of people whenever they want to do like the big billowing Ghibli style clouds and stuff. That's Seems to be the the approach for that kind of thing. Gonna have to try it out. Maybe. Yeah, we're all gonna have to test that, that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because well, we all have the paint too, right? <laughs> I mean, if we can make uh, the one translation, I'm not getting the with my traditional is I'm not getting that extra pop that I want that I get digitally, mm -hmm. which is probably possible. I just got to figure it out, you know, and play around with it. Yeah. At I mean, first, Mike, I thought I you had remember. a bunch of layers there on the left, but those are like your like actions or something. Oh, the are these these mm -hmm. are Presets? these are the brushes. <laughs> oh wow, okay. But but um, I do have actions. I have a few actions, and I keep them on button. <laughs> a few. <laughs> I I have to do the buttons. That's insane. I can't. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I don't think. Uh, I think I have like three, if that. Uh, it. I have a few that you know, sure. like it, I, my go tos, you know. So, like, uh, I think for like the Hyperlight Drifter uh, fan art piece I did a while back, um, I actually made a, a a kind of like paper green kind of thing um, on my own. Like that was just like funny thing because I was looking at some of Jake Wyatt's work, and it's like, oh, I want to do this paper green, and it's like trying to do this kind of like grid like pattern kind of thing, sure. but then, you know. By trying to imitate, and then end up with something completely different. But it's like, oh, this is pretty cool. So yeah, ended exactly. up staying with my staples. So do, do you, yeah, um, you don't animate in Photoshop, though, do you? This um, creating your backgrounds, right? <laughs> Sometimes I have. Um, I've done it a couple of times, but okay. um, I know Nasser Robert Valley approach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the Robert Valley thing. It's a insane but yeah but um Nasser got me um to use a bit of tv paint a little bit which is mm. i have some issues with that program but you know that's you know sure. it's mostly in just the the uh sh the way that the shortcuts work and stuff like that but uh you know it's, it's a very doable program it's simple in its own way and it's like you know definitely right. made i feel like it was made by an artist Oh, okay. Uh, particular taste. I don't think I've ever tried that. It's a television page. It's a and it's an animation program, right? Did it yes. replace like Toon Boom? Um, I don't, I don't think it replaces it. Um, I believe it's mostly just different markets, um, different people. Okay. Um, maybe their 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 approach or their um their workflow is different. But um, I know Toon Boom is still being used a lot for like you know. A lot of shows, anyways. Um, like they used it at Novana and stuff like that. I, okay, um, I guess it's like a it's like the two D equivalent of uh, usually. You know, usually if you're looking at like three D artist jobs, they're like, oh, we want to experience in like Maya or three D S Max, and it's like mm -hmm. most people I know like. I don't know anyone that's experienced in 3ds Max. Anyone I know is like experienced in Blender. Or I actually <laughs> learned. I actually started uh, in 3D Studio Max when I was in art school. Um, mm. 
way back in the day. You're, and then you you are the one. <laughs> yeah, I'm the, I'm the one. I mean, I, I actually can tell you bought my old portfolio of, of uh, 3D stuff too. It was like a boring ass tractor and uh, mm. an interior of a, a room with some lighting. It was at that time, you know, it was like the coolest thing I've ever done in 3D. Wow. I, guess. I mean, one yeah. of my good friends from college. Um, I mean, he he uh, they did gaming in uh, Seneca College, where me and Nasser actually came from, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, like they did Max uh, pretty much for their uh, 3D portion of the program. Um, and only like recently have they like switched over to Blender, uh, to like try to like you know, integrate yeah. into the pipeline. It was a lot of resistance, but uh, it's like you know. I mean, I was looking into yeah. like you know for years. Everyone was telling me to, do, <clears throat> excuse me, like ZBrush stuff, and yeah. then mm-hmm. and, um, we have another mutual friend, Ron, and then Andrew was the other one who basically was like, do Blender, use Blender, and you can. I've done enough in Blender now with Andrew. Where I'm like, you can do a lot in here. So mm-hmm. I just haven't had enough time. You can get dangerous. Yeah. yeah, I haven't I haven't gotten into like nodes and stuff as much, but I'm basically practicing just like Andrew and I, you know, he's been teaching me some stuff. So I've just been doing, let's build a shape. Let's move a shape. Let's see if this works, you know. So if, so I'm guessing just by looking at this, this is the color script for Legend, correct? Um, you can say it's the color script. Uh, what's funny about that is this was a very interesting um this is definitely not the usual way people do it uh, because color scripting is usually a lot more broad strokes, a, a lot more like like smaller than this, which is like four different like long pages of these these. So this whole thing is it's basically like, like so when you, when, when you say when you say smaller in terms of like uh, the amount of shots that you're color directing or yes. the overall size, so- okay. It's well, it's more like an overall overarching kind of uh thing. So like if you see his color script, it's like usually they would have like maybe one one shot that's supposed to be like encompassing this entire scene, right? And then another shot that's mm. maybe like, oh, there's gonna be if there's an emotional movement, then it's like they go to another shot, right? And then uh so you can like fit an entire Pixar movie, you know, thing in like, you know, forty panels or something, you know? But it's not right. like going into the minute every shot <clears throat> is this like, where's the lighting in this shot where's the lighting in that shot but in this did, case yeah do they, do they ever go that minute on, on a project yeah like they, that, they, or they, does they it, do does it stay okay they eventually do yeah um but like since for this project i was pretty much going to be like like basically to, like in charge of some color stuff for every shot anyways so it's like i might as well just <clears throat> do them like all anyways figure out. yeah figure it out because i'm guess, yeah i was gonna say i guess this kind of acts as like your thumbnails for those anyway also because yeah. you already have it sorted you're like cool i know how to paint this exactly yeah and um like it's i still have to think of it first in broad strokes um before i go into my new details right so um i guess i guess looking at looking at um legend in this case, there's going to be like, um, we have things that um, we can't change. Like, I always think about, like, in terms of like when you're building a color script, it's like you always have things that you can't change and the things that you can change. So, the first thing I remember was uh, Nasser actually uh, finished the trailer. So, it was like, actually, this shot, like these scenes. We're pretty much there before. Oh, well, this this whole part was there. This is actually a, a screenshot from the trailer, but uh, <laughs> they they were there before he uh, sent me the storyboards, uh, like the whole story, all the rest of the storyboards. And I was like, okay, that's something that we can't really change. Uh, we do want it to be daytime in a certain place. So one of the main things it's like um, I had a place to start, and so I can't really deviate that much from that. Unless, of course, you know, we change the whole thing to nighttime, which would be, you know, like a, I didn't want to. Huge, huge change. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, it kind of works because um, one of the coolest things, at least one of the more natural things you can do for color scripting, I find, is that time of day is one of the things that you can bring in natural progression. So it's like, oh, you know, the, the midday, evening, is if you, can, you can make it feel a certain way. Um, 
like you can even you know in in um in uh legend you know it sort of ends on this kind of shot where it's like oh it is sunset we want there to be an ending to this that feels like an ending right like mm-hmm. the setting things uh, all the events have closed right so that was like sort of like a larger framework that i that i uh wanted to keep there but then at the same time i was thinking that like you know what this is a fun project and i want to try things that i don't think i can get away with in other projects so then we did some we did some weird stuff so um for now one, how much two. uh mm-hmm. How much did uh, Nas art direct? In ter- like, did he pretty much give you like full reign, except for like a few key things, or did you guys work pretty closely together to figure out the overall oh. color <clears throat> script? He gave me some. Uh, he gave me some good references, actually, um, that he wanted to hit. Like, there were some like notes that he want. Like, he said, "Okay, we want this kind of feel." Like when. When Broly was getting like you know blasted at the end of it, he said, "Okay, let's." He wanted to look at um, what was it Cell uh, when Cell mm. gets killed, and it's like there was like a very particular palette, so it was like blue and like sort of like this purplish blue. Um, I have it here. Where is it? Oops. Oh, it's back. I have. Oh no, where's? Where's my reference? Oh well, well I have the re- I, have, I have some references that um, Nasser actually <clears throat> gave. Me. Here we are. Uh, oh, I can just show you from Discord. So he actually sent me this. Oh, nice. Which is actually like, well, this is my Discord window. I, I was gonna say that's the that's the actual cell fight, right? Yes. So there's the actual okay. cell fight. There's some Vegeta, the the first Vegeta fight here too. Uh, Vegeta mm. versus Goku, and then there's some of the Broly movie. Um, I think it's the second Broly movie as well, mm. uh, which is like you know, like some of my favorite stuff. Actually, no, my fa- actually, I, I I just read my favorite stuff is from the first Broly movie, because um, we wanted to get some more distinctive kind of like um, uh, old school kind of like like looks to it, and some of these like the color logic. Like um, for traditional, like when we learn about color and light and stuff, like a lot of this stuff doesn't seem to make much logical sense. Um, it's like, like for example, suddenly Goku's hair is like, like yeah. uh, crimson, right? Mauve or something, you know. And then it's yeah. like we got this kind of thing here, and then it's like, um, actually, yeah, is that is that mm-hmm. more is that more a case of uh, the restrictions of traditional animation of that time, or is it is it actually like <laughs> Um, is it is it is it a stylistic choice as a result of the limitations of the technology right. at the time, or is it the other way around where it's a stylistic choice that they were going to have regardless of the uh, technical limitations? I feel like it's a bit of both. I feel like it's a bit okay. of both. Um, I actually um, like in some ways it's like there is no way that they didn't specifically make this um, color palette for Goku, like not unset like they 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 want to make it unsettling right like yeah broly's uh powering up right in front of him in this scene and it's like they wanted things to not feel right um and it's really interesting to see that like working you know and it's like um it's kind of funny because in the documentary of uh legend like i don't really dive into like how the color logic doesn't make sense but it's like that's the stuff that fascinates me really and that's the stuff that's like why does this make sense? Yet it doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. And it's like, Actually, that's the whole stuff. <clears throat> that, that, that leads me into another question then. Um, mm-hmm. I, think, I think Alan and I are kind of about the same when it comes to color. Like, mm. w- would you say that you're kind of instinctual when it comes to color, Alan? Like, you, you just kind of know what feels right? It's, yeah. Nowadays, I, it's, I'm better about it. But I think when I was first starting out, there was a lot of, guessing and picking and choosing and doubting the, the colors ah. it's comes down to me not learning enough color theory at the start basically mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I think I'm I think I'm the same way where I do have like a working knowledge of like, you know, rules and laws or whatever, but a so large amount of like my time. Yeah, like a large amount of my like working with color and stuff, I kind of just go like, uh, what does it look like if I have a little bit of a blue here or something? Yes. And then I if it's digital, I can always backtrack on it. If it's traditional, then I'm kind of like, well, I'm stuck with that mistake. I yeah. gotta work around it. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's um, color yeah. vibration, you know? It's. Ooh. I mean, uh, you and I, you know, you can always, you know, if I, when I used to do traditional stuff in college, I used to just bring in a Photoshop and mess around with colors. I don't do that as often yeah, now because like I'm, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm primarily all digital. <laughs> yeah, you like, the, you like the headache of figuring it out if you, if you fuck it up. Um, well, so, uh, Mike... If I'm wrong, I feel anytime I talk to you, you seem to have way more knowledge about this stuff, and I think you you think about it a lot more than I do. I mean, I when it comes to this kind of thing, yeah, like yeah. like you actually think about like the whys and and the hows of like why does this thing work? Mm. How is it working? I have a tendency to I'll look at it and be like, huh. Why does that work? And then I try and just replicate it and see if I can kind of learn it by osmosis instead of like mm. probably doing the proper thing of like sitting down and analyzing it more. I feel like I have a bit of both of that. So sometimes it's like I try to replicate it until it starts to like, like I start to see, oh, wait, he's choosing this color only when this happens, you know? And then it starts, mm. to, like, the logic starts to come in sometimes, especially <laughs> if it's something that I'm like really confused about and I don't really know. Like, okay, why is he using pink here? And then, like, I try in a different scenario. It's like, that doesn't look right. Okay, try in another scenario. And then see if there is, like, a thread of logic in there. So, yeah, there's a lot of experimenting. So, it's funny because um, that Goku with the pink hair, I remember we, we actually, uh, I think Nasser actually did end up doing that for the final one. Where he had, like, when Goku was getting, like, really angry and then the lightning bolts strike and then... We sort of made his oh, hair yeah. more pinkish. Um, yeah, we tried going for that kind of thing, and that it's a, it's kind of funny because this was like I was saying that there's some things you can't change before, but then it's like this was an artificially induced kind of nighttime that like like the transition yeah, of it's like, like storms, like, yeah, the, mm -hmm. the clouds gathering and all that. Yeah, and um, and then it like you know goes into that final fight, and then we have when Broly like sort of gets blasted and then we have this sort of cell kind of color where it's like, oh, this is the purples versus the light, like blues and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. So I, gotta, I have a question, not knowing anything about animation. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of thing you would hand to the animator and say this is, and they would be like, oh, these are the colors they want to use for every, like this whole sequence, basically. Um, as far as like them coloring it. Because you're just giving right. colors, right? Who, who, and saying these are the colors. Yeah, who teams. would this actually get passed off to uh, yeah, during production what, yeah. usually? So, I mean, it would either go into a... Um, um, I believe it would go to a color stylist mm -hmm. to translate, at least usually for, like, the color script itself and stuff. And, like, you know, um, like a color stylist would basically make things like, you know, a palette that is, like, you know, with boxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, like say, okay, for this shot, this character is doing like, like we're using this palette for their skin. We're using this these boxes for their skin and shadow and stuff like that. Or like maybe the shadow is like in a specific multiply layer, as an example. Mm -hmm. And say, like, okay, I'm going to fill it with that. Um, and then the um, the colorist would go in and do it. I think. Um, yeah, like so, I have so a lot of color fills recently <laughs> but yeah so it would basically be like you'd have a color a script per, uh, whoever would do the color script they would determine the overall look and feel of it you would mm -hmm. had a color stylist then go in and determine what exact colors you're, they're using for each of yeah. those shots with those yeah okay and then it would go off to i guess uh the color team yeah all right that's cool like um <laughs> Yeah, and I'm assuming you had to do all those roles for this. <laughs> yeah, that's what it sounds like for this. <laughs> um, not necessarily. <laughs> for this one, I know Nasser, I think he just, just like, uh, I gave him the color script and then he like color picked a lot of it from it, I think. Um, and then tweaked it. Um, 
but you know it it differs um depending on like the especially since like sometimes the size of the team you know is that will really change things up you know like it's much better to have like something that we can always refer to or like you know a master file of like oh in most of the shots the flats are like this right of for broly um if there were more of us doing it you know um then that would be more important but uh, this was a pretty freestyle uh production pipeline for sure something something i wonder about with uh with uh i guess with i I guess it's within like the color stylist thing um because i've seen it like with some animation stuff um Mm -hmm. is you know like so you'll have like to use an example uh, that i can think of off the top of my head like steven universe or whatever you'll Mm -hmm. see them determine like you know, this is the palette of him during what is considered like a standard day, standard lighting kind of thing. These are the colors that's always going to be him. Yeah. And then they'll have a collection of colors for, you know, uh, this is during like an energy glow or this is at yes. night or whatever. Are those, how much of that is like just them taking the colors and just tweaking them? And then how much of it is saying like stylistically, basically like, all these sets of blue are now these colors. They they are nowhere near these colors at all, and we didn't even shift to, towards them. But for all intents and purposes, within the context of this scene, these are what these colors are. I feel like that that can change. Uh, it really depends on uh, the the case, like so, the drama of the scene. Yeah, and everything. yeah. So like, I think it eventually it just has to go back to like, you know who the art director is. It's like, or like you know like. Let's say they wanted to um, just have like, oh, this is just in like a forest this time. So it's like, okay, we can just get away with like putting either like, um, like tweaking the whole thing quickly with, um, you know, maybe a a soft light layer or something. And then it's like, just to get the mood right, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, um, but then there's some, some that's like, okay, we, we want to get like specific, we want to hit specific color notes, like, like this guy's got um, I don't know iridescent like kind of thing, so we have to have like some kind of like like pink shapes and uh, like some stuff to mimic bokeh color or something, you know, like the the lens flare and stuff like that. Right. And um, like you know, sometimes they have to have something more particular, depending on the shot. Um, and then sometimes you know it's just like put a multiply layer on it, <laughs> to, you know, set it in the scene. And get, it, yeah. get, it done, get it done. Yeah sometimes but um but i've, I've seen is, where uh you, you know it's funny it's like that is something i feel like I, this might just be me but like i feel like a lot of i i mainly have noticed it with like i guess anime stuff like modern anime mm-hmm. is i think because it's digital now and you can kind of like yeah like you said like you can just do it in a multiply layer for shadows and then there you go that's that you can mm-hmm. sometimes end up with like bold decisions mm-hmm. compared to like the older stuff where it's kind of like uh the, the closest analog i could think of is like um you compare comic coloring from like the 80s 90s to 2000 and up mm-hmm. I mean, like 2000 like roughly around like 2000 and higher pretty much at that point the entire industry was doing digital from like the 80s to like mid to like maybe light late 90s it was all traditional and the way they would do it was because uh because you had to assume it was newsprint and you had a four color process that you had to work with they would mm-hmm. mix up very specific uh mixtures of watercolor yes. that were oh yeah God. that yeah, yeah. That were, uh calling out specific like this, this particular mixture is like you know 55% or 50% cyan, 20% magenta, 20% yellow, and 0% black. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as a result, though, you get things like um, like the like the coloring in Batman Year One, where you can get some really weird and stylized coloring. And I mm-hmm. feel like nowadays <clears throat> with digital, you run into less of that because you're not you're not running into the same restrictions where you're like, I only have a hundred colors, I gotta make these all work. <laughs> Now, now yeah, it's right. like, oh, I have three billion colors I can choose from. I can do whatever I want. I mean, yeah. I hope they all print. 
Yeah, that's yeah. true. I mean, that that is the flip side of it. Now it's like you have a lot of more people that are just kind of like whatever, and then it prints out. And it's like, why is it so dark? And it's like, well, you you went over ink limits. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that actually reminded me of um the sunset. Actually, do you, hmm? I, I was gonna sure. say, do you think do you think that's the case with the with like we're talking about like the stylistic choices of traditional animation earlier? Did they have those same kind of restrictions where they can only work with a certain <laughs> amount of colors um or yeah i don't know like, that's a good question but yeah. i think i think it also has to do with the evolving pipeline as well like who how much time do they actually spend on that part now or like you know how much time is like um i guess that that's also like a also in, in terms of like how much um how much uh like luxury time some for some people is like luxury time can they actually spend on it because they have like 20 other shots or 20 other characters that need need a color style so, yeah so like there's a lot of like time time like issues and stuff like that and um i miss those i do i do miss seeing those like wild and crazy like color logics that's like oh my goodness like i don't know like vampire hunter d bloodlust kind of things like back then they had like super pale faces and stuff like that or like you know angel's egg uh where it's like they have some really interesting like usage of color that's like man i i want to see that kind of stuff again <clears throat> but it's like it also takes like time and care to uh um especially if like if it's in like pre-production i think it's like spending a good a good amount of that doing stuff which i i think i feel like there's a bit more of a resurgence of like people knowing the importance of it um mm -hmm. especially after like arcane and stuff like that like i don't know how long how many years they spent in pre-production for that but they spent a while and they it's spent a like a lot of time on that yeah but it, yeah but it I, I was shows. genuinely curious about that it shows man it's so good i think i thought i read an article that said it was eight years but i could be wrong I mean, eight I, years. I, I wouldn't oh be God. surprised. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm not surprised by that because it, yeah. it it was beautiful. Like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, real quick on that show, I think there's no shot I couldn't pause where I was like, that could be, that's that's a beautiful shot right there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, I think you're God. right. There's people are taking a little bit more time now. I think because they realize the importance of some of these things. But it also comes down to what mm -hmm. you said before that, which is, do you have the time to spend? Mm -hmm. like if it, if it was eight years like i i don't remember if it was arcane that i was thinking of uh read about mm -hmm. but who who has that kind of time when you're a big production house trying to get things out the door yeah and you know yeah. like i mean for for most people who are like you know who are like actually like you know really um you know passionate about their work and stuff they would want to spend more time yeah on that right? <laughs> like exactly like i mean i spent a lot of time on my pieces where my the the my mentors are like just move ahead to the next one already. <laughs> like you spent too much time on this because you could tinker all day right yes especially yeah. on digital you're just like oh let's see what happens if i do this you know mm -hmm. when you're traditional you're kind of like i should stop fucking with this i'm gonna mess it up yeah <laughs> <clears throat> oh man it's interesting because like i wanted to go into those like sort of like more custom stuff i know nasser actually like he he also wanted to go into more of those like you know not just not just like a layer style over over the flats kind of thing uh, mm -hmm. and we wanted to do some of that in um in uh legend um it's so funny because um i feel like some of the parts um uh that i color designed for legend uh at least for like the, mo the movements and stuff like that um if I did my job correctly, you feel it, but you won't notice it. You know, that's what it should. I feel like that's right. what it should be. Um, which is funny because, like, I don't know if I heard a lot of people talk about the uh, what was it? I called it a fake out of um, the uh, the crescendo of of the film, which was when Vegeta actually like hits Broly into the ground and it turns like solid, like almost like red. You know, like. It, yeah you know, all that stuff but then it's like afterwards like pretty much right afterwards it was like a fake out of uh of um that this was going to be the end and then it's like oh broly just like pulls him back into reality 
So like goes from that red kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. You like whoop, just pulls them right out of there. Right. And then we're back into the, the daylight. And the lighting. Yeah, I was gonna say the lighting just goes back to normal. Mm-hmm. And then uh um, Yeah, you know, I didn't even think about that. I didn't either. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> not, not to be in the back of my head. <laughs> yeah, you, you just feel it in the in in your bones. Mm. But I remember like um I think Nick it was really funny because um Nick was um telling me about like like some of his favorite parts of uh the color of uh um of legend and it was like yo Mike did you do that part with the where Broly is like like charging up his thing with the with the circles and stuff like that with all the colors like nope nope Nasu did that <laughs> even though I remember we did talk about like wanting to include um like you know sort of that sort of circle kind of like multiple color changing thing because that is what happens in uh broly the broly movie um the first movie especially um mm-hmm. but um yeah it's so funny because like nick was, was asking me about that and he was like nope i did not do that one <laughs> damn <laughs> that was his favorite part. that was damn <laughs> but it's all good uh if i did my job you know i did my job yeah. and it's kind of invisible but it's not it's like uh i forget where i heard it it, it the saying is like you didn't notice but your brain did mm-hmm. right. or it's like really just means it's like your subconscious picked up on it you didn't you didn't notice it but your subconscious picked up on it and, and understood it yeah and i think that's like that's uh, the best the best thing that could happen yeah if anything it's like you know sort of like i didn't have to spell it out for you you know yeah um but but they still get it hopefully that's that's usually the case like you know hopefully that's the case but um yeah so there are so, a couple of artificial movements yeah so with you know a uh, color script for animation uh any kind of animation any length whatever Mm -hmm. there's loads of story beats you have a lot of things you're you're basically like you say you're designing like the the whole mood of everything and it's having it's changing from like shot to shot whatever Mm -hmm. i know that you also do like i don't know if you've never done like freelance illustration right you just do like like personal work for yourself yeah Yeah, just personal work so i'm I'm curious then, how do you take everything that you've learned for this mm-hmm. and all that, and how do you translate that into like a single, into like whenever you do your personal work for like single illustrations and, and that mm-hmm. kind of thing? That's something that I've tried to like, like, you're like also like trying to listen to me, like how, like, how can I translate how so much of this can be conveyed and distill it down to like one scene? <laughs> right and be able yeah. to impart as much knowledge <laughs> as something like this can impart yeah it's um like i feel like it's a lot of like it goes back to like simplicity in terms of like fundamental picture making of like i mean i guess also because i'm a i'm a big sucker for like like uh old posters and like almost like a symmetrical kind of uh like like movie poster esque kind of uh, um, compositions, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, a lot of that is like <clears throat> it's still management of light, it's still management of like sections of color. So it's like okay, um, let's say that there's a, a hero that has a certain like like um, you know uh, energy, right? It's like okay, do I how how much do I want them to, to seem like they're in control of the scene or, you know, something else is in control of the scene, something else is looming in the background, you know, the faded sort of evil man in the back with the, with the hero in the front, you know, kind of thing. Like how much of that do I want yeah. kind of thing? Um, how much screen space does it take and how much, like, I guess it does go back to like, just like fundamental compositional stuff. Um, which to me has been so abstract because I never really like learned about about like it's ugh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can There's show that, you a couple. Uh, book. Crap. Who is it? 
uh, Edgar Allan Payne. Mm, uh, mm. Yeah, <laughs> Edgar, Allen, Payne. Edgar Payne. Is this, is his middle name Allen or is it Edgar Allan Poe? Oh my god! I think it's I. I want to say it's Alan. Like I do think it's like That'd a middle. So I, I think it is his middle name. But I could be wrong. Uh, I could have brain raisins about this and just. And I'm a big fan of Edgar Payne. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Did you did you work on Hyperlight Drifter or is this just you messing with your own thing? No, this these two were actually fan art pieces that I did. That's cool. Um, I remember you working on this one. Yeah. Yeah. This one. I remember. This was actually kind of like a breakthrough for me because it was like I wanted to be simple. And this was probably the first time ever that I actually <clears> made like a thumbnail. And I was like, okay, I can kind <laughs> of see it. I can, I can see, like, I'm actually convinced of the thumbnail. Mm-hmm. And before that, it's like I was just, you know, like a headless chicken running around, not sure, like, what is good composition, you know? What is a composition that actually, like, I'm sold on, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and this was the first one that actually, like, I felt that way. It's like, okay, like, keep those giants in the back, like, you know, all the way over there, but subtle. Do the pixels, because I want it to be pixels. Um, you know, that kind that's, of stuff. That's, that's surprising to hear that you, you didn't do thumbnails before this. Then again, like, <laughs> like, like, do I, I have a hard time with thumbnails, like too, thumbnails. so. Mm. I mean, nowadays, um, in terms of my process of doing thumbnail stuff, I always do like a lighting thumbnail first, like, you know, just quick, like, oh, where's the big shapes? Where's the, yeah, right. where's the biggest contrasts and stuff like that. And then like, now it's funny because after doing like this one, I remember like it sort of clicked to where it's like, now I kind of know the feeling of the like, way. I know when I'm more convinced of the thumbnail than before. It wasn't that... When like before, I would just be like, I would do a bunch of like thumbnails, and I would say, uh, maybe this one is good, you know. And then I would try it, <laughs> see if I could work my way through it, and then half the time it didn't work, you know. Right. Yeah, I do like uh, ten or fifteen I- thumbnails, but I used to do like a hundred. Oh my goodness! Well, that's, that's the way my the instructor I was with was like, do more, do more. I'm like, wait a minute, I already kind of know what I want after the tenth one. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. I, I have a tendency to I'll do one and unless like I unless I have like weird this misgivings cool. about it, it's kinda like I'll do I'll do like one thumbnail and then if I feel okay with it, then I'm like, this is I think the one. Mm. And I wanna say that's a, like a seventy percent success rate. But like mm. Alan Alan will test you it. Like I I uh I've been recently doing this uh Hellboy piece is like a personal piece mm. and I had two thumbnails I originally was going to go with and I let it sit for like a week during a winter break. And when I came back to it at the start of the new year, I saw it. I was like, Oh, I don't like either of these. <laughs> I like this third. Mm. <laughs> thumbnail that was off I mean, the I side. think the new one you did the third option, I think is, is, is honestly better than the first two, but you, we only had the first two to pick from. So when you no, showed no, us, the right. Third one, so oh, there was initially the lineup of the five. Oh, okay. I, I, I have I five thumbnails that. to pick. I have five thumbnails to pick from, and I that the the one I'm working on now actually came in third, but only by like one vote. Oh, uh, difference hmm. between the second and the third one. I mean, I think so the one we're probably, on now has more flow to it. The other ones weren't bad. This one just reads better. The new one. Yeah, I I, I like it. I like it a little bit more. Um, I think. Uh, Otherwise, I may need to think some. I, I need to think, start thinking more like uh, you, where, where it's uh, thinking about like lighting and massing and how to com- compositionally write that. I'm still very much like I think about lines and that kind of abstractness when it comes to composition instead of like mass and tone, which I think probably I should be leaning more towards that. I, I feel you like might. I need to be leaning a little more in lines. I, I got, really? I got like the other way of the I mean, spectrum. Yeah, I feel like that. This is, I mean, your your stuff is really good. Uh, like clear yeah. reads and everything. Oh, thank you. But, uh, I mean, I you, your lighting is great. I, lighting is what kills me. I'm still not mm. that good at. Like you got really good lighting in this piece right here. I, oh, thank you. That was. I'm um, be uh, thinking about like just the top portion over there. That's like a little glow going. Mm. Yeah. So so for something <laughs> like this then. Uh, yeah. You say that you figure out a li- like a lighting scenario first. I'm assuming that's like a grayscale. Um, I actually don't 
It's been a while. I don't think I've worked in grayscale in years, actually. You work right so, so you kind of just. Yeah. That's cool. I just color blotch. Um, yeah. That's what I do sometimes, but mm. you know, my mentor would tell me to go to grayscale. Mm. I mean, that's now. the interesting thing is for me, it's, it's hard to translate it properly mm. from grayscale to color because yeah. color inherently like actually has it changes the the uh the value right like like a more intense blue will make it darker uh you know a more intense red will bring it to the middle a more even though it'll feel brighter right mm -hmm. uh that's the thing is like i mean i've been trying to like figure out a way to articulate it for a long time it's like when you say like warmth and coolness is like let's say if there's like you know like it's 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 all it's, relative. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like I feel like there's another dimension of it that people don't go into, where it's like, this is like, if it's like a cool blue light, or in this case, you know, like more of a pale light, but it's like, would you say that this more intense blue is warmer than like this kind of relatively desaturated, like dark blue? I'd say it actually has more energy, and would I call that warmer? I don't know. I feel like uh, I would. At least for me, and this is, I think, this is probably just how I, I've learned color is like, mm -hmm. you know, whenever they talk about like warmer and cooler, uh, the best way I described it is like, if it's the closer it is to yellow, the warmer <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. You know, then the closer it is to blue, like the, the cooler it is. And that's like just across the spectrum. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like for example, in this piece, it's, overall warmer mm -hmm. in comparison to blue however within the blue mm -hmm. the light reads more to me as like a teal green yeah. than the uh, shadows mm -hmm. yeah then there is like the uh there is like the 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 part of it you kind of you kind of mentioned where it's like as, as things are dipping away from the light they get more saturated and and can get more intense because like nothing's like full saturation in direct light mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because like the terms have always like sort of I feel like there's a, a bit of confusion in terms of that, in terms of like like is it just more yellow or more, you know, more sun hot, if you know what I mean? <laughs> is that is that what that means for like warmth? Cause like at the same time it's like if if I had like an intense like I guess this wasn't the this wasn't an issue before because we didn't really have like intense blue lights, right? Like neon lights until, until, uh, yeah, until relatively recently. Yeah. But like, like, is that, isn't that more energy, right? At least for me, it's like, I was I get, like, nowadays I'm actually thinking along those lines more about light giving it energy and saying that, okay, if I can feel the energy of the light, then does that mean that I'm getting it warmer? Just from, I guess, the lighting perspective instead of just a straight up color yeah. design right yeah so. that's that's actually a good question i think because like i you know what i can think of an instance where i've noticed that and that's uh like well so if i'm watching like say a movie on streaming like netflix or something like that yeah. you know because of like video compression um colored lights will get blown the fuck out Mm -hmm. uh, especially especially if it is like uh, an intense blue led color or something like that or intense red color like you'll actually see it it's like the color the light color that's supposed to be the brightest part of the skin is like weirdly cut out and for some reason like a shade darker than the area that it's supposed <laughs> to be falling away from the light yes and i think it's because of like the video compression is not translating it well yeah yeah i can't yeah it makes it it makes it pretty interesting. I feel like that's some of the stuff that like I'm fascinated by as well in terms of uh uh that actually you when you were talking about that that actually reminded me that those screenshots of uh that I took from the Broly movie they were mm -hmm. from like an old VCD that I had uh oh. that I a long time ago. And then the funny thing is like when I see the um like like a remastered version of like the same movie now it's like uploaded or something like you know like high quality the colors are 
different. And I was thinking, hmm, you know that VCD that I has? Like, I kind of like those colors because it's just so like degraded and weird, you know? <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say, is that like that? I guess that's like the animation equivalent of like um, people that say that they like uh, their comics and like how they're colored and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then you kind of think about it, it's like, okay, well, is that the only reason do you like that? Is because the newsprint? Because you're looking at newsprint that's been yeah. aged already so there's like a yellow tone to everything now well, yeah because you, you figure what like you grew up with too right like you like that nostalgia yeah well i i was gonna say like you think about it like when like going back to that example like batman year one or even like dark knight returns when that came out you got to figure like those colors look vastly different against a stark white than it does when there's like an undertone of like yellowness to like the newsprint mm-hmm and I, I do wonder, like, how much of it is, like, do you, how much do we remember the sense memory of, like, the of how it looked fresh? And how much of it do we remember? <laughs> I mean, some of my comics like, are in mint condition, man. <laughs> <laughs> <They look> good. <laughs> and back then, did they degrade faster? Uh, that's a good point. I don't, I, you know, I, I like, think, I, I think they post, had better. I think they used cheaper paper back then. Like, if I feel you look like at they the, did, yeah. you, I like, I mean, I got comics from the store last week. Paper quality is definitely better. It's mm -hmm. probably because it's designed to last longer. The colors mm -hmm. are differently. Like current X Men, I'll use X Men as an example because that's my my jam. Old X Men comics, and I'm talking like just '90s. Jim Lee X Men have, mm -hmm. in my opinion, I feel richer colors than the current X Men line. I feel like they, the colors still look good, but I also feel like they don't spend a lot of time on it because they're like it's a comic book. Get it done. Get it out the door. Get it to the masses. Um, mm. And then I also have like the Marvel app. So if you look at the same comic book in the app, then you have the digital coloring Is that process. Like perfect color version. Yeah, it's they say it's <laughs> scanned, right? But I'm like, ah, hmm. I wonder if it's scanned and then somehow um, processed. Like maybe the, the algor whatever algorithm they're running is like make this red redder, make this blue bluer, because it always mm. looks a little bit too uh much like a video game or like a not a video game but mm. like digital it looks too like rich for a comic book i wonder i wonder if they're doing it where it's like they have it if they do have it automatically if it's just like sampling the uh page color and say right. like there's your white mm -hmm. and it's just white balancing all the pages to whatever the white is for oh, each page. it must be doing something because if you were to look at them side by side the same issues the physical copy is more saturated um, wow desaturated i'm sorry um okay. and, and then the digital one is like blown up and i'm wondering if that's because you need to be able to see it on that screen right um hmm. if it could be it could also be like maybe the backlight or something is yeah it's affecting something that's affecting that, you know it, you know and then if you look at like last week's x-men versus <clears throat> my 1990 x-men the colors they definitely spent more time on the colors back then for sure um, mm. and i'm wondering if it's because maybe they had a manual budget yeah <laughs> yeah manually doing it too right some bits yeah. in the coloring and all then yeah um, it's not like you know you do a oh so what I, I wanted to ask like what were the uh balls oh painting practice this was a uh something that i was trying to think of like as in like an infographic kind of post that i wanted to eventually do was um adding color vibration into uh like you know whatever you want you know and like how can we add that in so it's like, you know, like, where are the first places you, you f like, that I feel like are, I guess, the, the best places to add some, like, vibration and color and stuff like that. So, like, like the first place Re would be, like, hmm? Real quick, Mike, can you describe what color vibration is as simply as possible? Um, I'd say, so you have your local color. Yeah, like just the, so we have, like, con a context yes, for it. Yes, sure. <laughs> so we have, like, a local color. Like, let's say this, this ball, this sphere is orange, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, a color vibration is almost like like you put a color that's not the orange there um, to add in a kind of interest to it that it's like it doesn't it doesn't disrupt that we see that it's an orange sphere. Mm -hmm. We still think it's orange, mm -hmm. but um, but you can add other colors there as little accents in order to create a, a different kind of interest. Uh, at least that's how I think of it as. You're talking um, like to show like energy going through it, or you can do that, yeah. Like yeah. A shadow moving how across it, or something like that. 
yeah, however you feel, even if it's like, you know, something to simulate, um, like, like a bit of like lens, lens flare or something, mm -hmm. you can do stuff. Uh, if you were a 90s kid like me and you had glasses when you were really young, really yep. thick ones, if you looked at something from the side, you yeah. see like a blue rim and a, and a red rim. Oh, uh, man. Like, I know that dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had that. Oh, man. It's when you, yeah, when you get glasses. Glasses are one. huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, this was like sort of like an exercise in like, um, I don't hear people use this term, but like, I, I don't know if, I don't think I coined the term, but like, I've never heard it, but like, color proportion. So it's like, I feel like hmm. there's a, a line of color proportion that you have to hit before a color starts to not feel like it's designed color. So like, you know, like this orange, right? There's only so much you can do that, like, like I can put a green here, I can put a blue here, but if I, I mess up the proportions and I put too much of it in, it starts to look like a different color. It doesn't look like orange anymore, right? And trying to find that balance, you know? Okay. Uh, yeah. Like, so. so to me, to my eyes, like that mm -hmm. one, point that you don't even know what <laughs> the yeah, one that's one? Next to, yeah that that one yeah. yeah i'd say like that one actually reads yellow to me than it does orange mm -hmm. and, I, yeah. and i don't know if that's like the green added in with the red or what but it is like mm -hmm. it reads more like a lemon than it does like an orange to me right yeah i think it's uh it's definitely um interesting because it's like i think i i overemphasize the the yellowish kind of light this one's more mm. of an overexposed white kind of light where like I want to show that's kind of like, edge. yeah, I was going to say those two are like skin color, but with like orange undertones. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, the part of this was um, me kind of like wondering, should I just say like, you know, overexpose this? And so like we get things like the saturated edge and like sort of this like really, really hot highlight. And it's like, these are kind of the places where you can start to like see these like funky colors or you know um you can start having funky colors come in um at least for me that's like the first places that i went to when i started experimenting with color vibration stuff um before going into like the actual tone of it you know and saying oh i'm gonna mm -hmm. put some here but I'm, i start off on these these kind of like the edge of the shadow shape edge of like where that highlight is edge of like some of those other places um mm -hmm. and then going like you know seeing how far i can push it with like a neutral looking sphere um is like is this so, too much too little i was gonna say is that is that under the assumption that that's also orange and just mm -hmm. pushed really far or is that or is that removing the local color entirely and just the effects on top yes okay. uh, this is just removing the local color entirely i mean it's funny because it's like these are all just manually just I just color picked and did that. Mm -hmm. It's like um I'm just trying to see like how far can I push this? Does it still kind of optically look um gray, right? Yeah. Um which is actually leads to another term that I've only heard recently from uh, a painter that like one of my friends, um Peter Chan. Um and he talked about like optical color mixing, which I thought was very mm -hmm. interesting. Um, I don't, I didn't know about optical color mixing, but then it's like, oh is. wait, that makes so much sense, you know? Uh, like, that is that is my bread and butter. <laughs> mm, I like I like that. Pretty much like um, I have a few cases with my illustrations, like most of them, uh, because of like the airbrushing and all that that I do. I, I rarely mix color. I usually just do like kind of straight out of the tube where if it is, or if mm -hmm. it is mixed, it's like slightly modified from the tube color. Mm -hmm. And most of the mixing is done uh, on the, on the surface. And it's just like, you know, a spattering here of blue with a spattering of red on top. And as a result, like you step back and all of a sudden it's purple. Yeah. Yeah. How do you go about learning that stuff? Cause like, I remember uh, you were talking about like, even just like, learning gradation by, by tiling. Uh, but yeah. then it's like, that's a completely different thing. That's color mixing. Whereas this is like, like a speck of something, like the proportions of the color is going to be optically mixing, right? 
For me, it was it's and it still is. It's like I feel like I'm still learning it. It's uh, it is just trial by fire for me. It's <laughs> <laughs> going uh, at it. Yeah. yeah, I'll just go at it. I'm not surprised I, that you I, say that. <laughs> I have plenty. I have plenty of work where belched on the uh, experiment, and all of a sudden I realized, like, oh no, fuck this up. I got to go back to the drawing board. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's like some instances. Let me see. I might have. Like okay, this this was more like a material failure than it was like a color thing, but it is mm-hmm. like kind of a color failure too. Um, but yeah, like this was like because I also like learned a lot of uh, I learned a lot of like painting with uh, watercolor and all that. I'm used mm-hmm. to optical mixing because or like you know colors being affected by things underneath. So it's like. Yeah. I'm not used to like how a lot of oil painters work, you know, where they, they teach it like Alpirima or whatever, where it's very direct and it's kind of like uh, more where like the gouache styling would come in where you learn like, like your string of colors and values and you learn to do your tiling that way. I kind of learned it doing the Watts Atelier thing, but mm-hmm. my brain is, I don't think I'm like still fully geared for that. I'm still geared more towards like, let's layer colors on and mm. how those layers happen is how things interact. Gotcha. And I've that had to do, I, I, I have had to do it where I make like a good th- like color thumbnail and I'm like, oh, I really like that. Uh, I will write down like the steps and the procedures of uh, the different colors and all that. Because I know for a fact if I don't, like wailing and be like, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. This is <laughs> this could right. go south so wrong. Yeah, because like, yeah, it, I think that's super important. Just having a catalog of your, like, just at least cataloging it down in order to be able to recreate it, right? Um, yeah, that's something that I really need to do more of. It, it, at least, at least with optical mixing too, it's interesting because. Okay, like taking taking like digital, like let's let's do it in like a digital context, right? Uh, say you have your orange ball, mm-hmm. and you want to have a gradation. Uh, you want to have it like gradate into like a, a shadow or shaded side or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could do it like with the multiply layer, right? Mm-hmm. Um, however putting like a flat color on top of a flat color and the top color because it's a multiply layer it's mixing with the with the local color underneath a certain way right yes yeah what the optical coloring does is like if you want to do the same thing optical coloring you could start it the same way you have a a flat local color and then i usually start thinking about is like it's really rudimentary where i say like okay if i want it to be uh, if I wanted to gradate into like a cooler side of things, I'm not going to go directly to blue because, mm. you know, you, you have that that orange and blue that's going to mm-hmm. mix and it's going to create like this like weird vibrance issue. Yeah. And it's not going to really look like it's gradating. It's going to look more like a crazy gray of some kind, right? Mm-hmm. So you got to ease it into it. And that means like for me, I'll take that orange and I'll I'll start to airbrush like red. Hmm like the start of the shadow and I'll start to gradate it like that red into like more of a purple and then that purple I can shift it into a blue and there's enough steps in between now that the colors they'll mix they'll mix as a result and the big thing is, is like also you need to have it like uh it's not enough to just do like a soft taking photoshop again it's not enough to do like a soft brush with like zero hardness and like your tra- your uh, opacity on and mm-hmm. doing it that way it's it's not going to mix the same way what has to happen is like it is full value or like uh, you can you can build it up with like if you set like your brush to like 40 or 50 percent value and then just kind of br- build it up that way but the main thing is is like you have these pockets uh where you have color and no color mm-hmm. and that, like what what, a, what an airbrush creates like an airbrush you know flicks paint like spatters of paint onto a surface so i have a few brushes like that in photoshop that do the exact same thing where they just create like a spray effect yeah because on the same 
same principle that happens with uh, uh, halftone printing for col- for comics and other things. Yeah. Where you have like a cyan, a magenta, and a yellow, and depending how far apart they are, and depending on how much they overlap, that creates the optical mixing. Interesting. Interesting. And you, yeah. I guess it's like because you go at least for like you were describing, going from like let's say instead of like orange to blue, you went from that red and you sort of like you 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 hue shift into it, and yeah. so you don't lose as much saturation. I'm guessing. Uh, it's like no, you know, in it, Photoshop, it's like you know you put it on and then it's like you lose so much saturation, right? If for better or for worse, yeah, you don't really lose. I have to really be self at least and this is something I'm I'm fighting more with is like I have to really fight to think less saturated because it is easy like with that with with at least for me doing it that way it is very easy to keep everything full saturated. <laughs> um and I can I run into a lot of trouble that way. Oh uh, okay. Cause then you can like and also like part of the way I work is like I kind of like at least right now in my artistic journey i can't quite think in terms of like you know how you said with uh doing your thumbnails where you just immediately dive right into the color and mass out your lights and darks with color mm-hmm. and everything like that uh for me i have to basically it, i have to consume that elephant with one bite at a time <laughs> mm-hmm. i can't i can't just eat the whole thing at once i have to do it like line or uh underdrawing and then my grayscale, my my grisaille or whatever, and then uh, start to lay in my colors, and then I'll start to worry about edges and stuff from there, and so on and so oh. forth. Oh man, I like to just race right into it. <clears throat> That's why when you help me with those three D builds, um, Scott made me sketch them over and over and over again. He's like, you can't put any shapes on top of this until you get your sketches correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, no one sees my sketch under all these shapes, but it's knowing how the body works at that point so we are running a little yeah. bit over time so if there's anything um mike that you wanted to talk about or promote oh, man. um it's so funny because when andrew was starting to talk about how he like sort of goes step by step on some <clears> stuff <throat> like, i feel like there's some stuff i can talk about there but it's like i mean i could show you a an example of uh yeah sure uh, a thing that i was like i was struggling and i was like getting i guess some kind of breakthroughs on my own painting. So okay. there Alan, is. Do you have any screen. questions or anything or no? I don't. I was going to ask him about the crit roll stuff. Oh, but... oh no. I was going to say like, like if there was any like chat questions, I wasn't sure. Uh, no, we had a couple people popping in and out and watching, but nobody was asking questions, even though I kept saying, please feel free to ask questions. It's all good. Oh, so I was just getting nervous and don't want to ask so... questions. <laughs> So I, um, I mean, as a hobby, I, I just paint a lot of line work that I find. Mm-hmm. This is from uh, an artist yeah. uh, on Twitter called Kando Ken. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember, I don't know if it was you, Andrew, that introduced me to this painter. Was it Denis, Denis Sarazin? Uh, or was it someone? Might have been another of my friends. Might, but... might have been someone else, yeah. Okay, but because he does these crazy like portraits of people figures and they like have like blue and like orange and stuff like that and so i was like how can i get like those kind of transitions in hue like really really strong transitions in hue and get the heat, the strong transitions in the in the shadow to light and it was just like i had to separate it out like this stuff i had to separate it out. i had to do the the um like i did a separate pass of like where i wanted to map the hue change and then I did a separate pass of like where I wanted to map the shadow, shadows and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards, I went and did third uh, painting, third paint over with um, like sort of like color picking each one, each one, and like you know, like tweaking the colors around so that it's sort of adhering to that that same uh, structure underneath. But um, yeah, this was a very interesting painting where I was. Oh, I wanted to get the bone to like really looked like bone sticking out in his elbow i wanted wanted his uh you know like at the joints to be like super red and stuff like that you know mm-hmm. and, yeah and this was a very interesting one that um that uh i was trying out 
um but yeah like it's like like what you're saying where it's like you know i can only digest like one part of it at a time right <laughs> when when uh when it comes to like vast hue changes and stuff like that um and trying to get like get it to also have like you know um light and shadow form it's like yeah i, I, it, I do I, have <laughs> make, yeah it makes more sense to kind of like split it out and figure it out from there yeah but um yeah that was nice. that's uh one thing some of the thing be, before we wrap up like uh, i know uh alan you wanted to ask him about uh critical role was that i was right? gonna ask you about you mentioned that you worked on some of the box mocking and stuff which i thought was fun yeah oh yeah it was a uh, big shout out to arthur loftus great art director i love his painting uh he helped me out um and uh yeah i helped out to um do some like sort of emergency painting stuff that had to get done um painted a bunch of rocks painted some caves i think i painted some um of like a dragon's cave and and then there was like some rivers and stuff like that. Um, some of them were really like they were they were pretty fun. Like overall, it was like a very cool project. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a fan of Matt Mercer. And who isn't? I want to meet yeah. somebody who hates. <laughs> I want to meet somebody who hates Matt Mercer. So I can be like, what's wrong with mm -hmm. you? <laughs> Su Sudi, uh, Sudi is on the chat. She said hi. Uh, Wait, Sudi, hang out with you. Oh, hey. I actually I just worked a show with her last week. She was. Two tables down from me. Our whole group, our whole really, group is all our friends. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah. Oh wow! I haven't, Ohio. I haven't seen Sudi in a while. We uh, last time we met was at CTN, actually. That's amazing. Possibly she's still listening. She can respond. Yeah, she was at <laughs> OhioCon with me. Um, oh, it a, cool! A small show, but we did all right. So nice, nice. Because I remember, uh, nice. I think uh, oh, years ago, I sent her a sketchbook. I did like a little uh, watercolor. <laughs> Thing Thanks. on that, uh, I think she said I just... left. <laughs> it's all good. Either way, back it's to Mercer. Right. Uh, are you going to be working on more of those projects with them? I think it's cool that they're reaching out to like. It's fun to hear about my artist friends working with them because I think it's mm. roles. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be doing more on it, but it was a good project. I I loved it. That's um, yeah, I got to got to paint a lot of trees and uh, rocks some water were, i mean there was a lot of forest and rain in episode six so that was you uh good job um yes hold on as a contractor for that or were you working in an animation studio and then the animation studio got contracted oh they just pulled me on um, oh nice it's a yeah freelancer i guess yeah just um because um cool. yeah because i worked with uh, another uh, art director uh, who's also amazing anthony Wu, very amazing art director um and uh because i worked with him and with uh, jeremy polgar who's also an amazing dude uh, <laughs> on, <laughs> they're actually yeah, my god they're so good and they're so nice it, uh, there, there's a lot of people that are like that like uh you know um you know who paul we is paul we i don't he don't he's a so this is this is the thing that's always fucking crazy to me. Like, he is. I think he's still on Simpsons. He's a long, long time storyboard uh, artist for Simpsons. Um, wow. Alan, he's a, he's actually uh, old classmates with Ron. Okay. As like a reference in terms of like. So he's he's been around that long. Yeah, he, he's he's mm -hmm. been around a long, long time, right? Um, yeah. Dude is probably one of the best figure artists I've ever seen. Wow. Um, in terms of like you see his personal work, you're like, oh my God. Like <laughs> such fantastic, like such fantastic work. And it's like, yeah, he just like you figure, like, you know, his day job is like he's just storyboarding Simpsons. Like he's just drawn <laughs> like Homer who knows how many times. Wow. Right? He got tired of drawing with domes. Well, yeah, what? it's like he's a, he's like this fantastic like caricaturist and like really, really knowledgeable about like human anatomy and stuff. And you realize like what like how much of that translates over to the simpsons man none of it Just... i mean homer running in at the carpet in the circle 
That's, yeah. That's, need, some, need some flexible chops for that. <laughs> that's where he came. That's where he shined. <laughs> I think it's like, I think it's funny. Like, they, like you do meet like a lot of artists that you realize like the kind of chops they have. And then like, you know, the, the money, the money work or whatever. It's kind of like, Oh wow. Like, right. Nearly as crazy as your personal work, my my God, you're like uh, you're working at like half speed or whatever. It's 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 almost like a, to borrow the DBZ thing. It's like this isn't even my final form. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like no, I, I do feel like um, when it comes to like uh, working on like long series and stuff like that, I almost feel like like if you're if you're if you're working a hundred percent, you're you are gonna burn out. If you work at like 60% for the job, it's like, you're going to do okay. You're going to yeah. do all right. It's not going to kill you. It's the, the weighted clothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so we're going to have to wrap this up because we're a little, little way over now and I don't want to lose this footage. Do you have anywhere? Be, uh, so I know you're on Twitter and Instagram. Do you have anywhere else that you haunt or... Just those. Um, mostly just those. I mean, I haven't really posted that much lately. Um, it's been a while. And balloon watcher on both of them. Is that correct? Um, I'm Mike Balloon Watcher on Instagram. Okay. I, believe... I, I, I hope, I, I hope I'm right. <laughs> you don't know. I hope I'm handle? right. That's not good. Uh, um, no, I, I got it. I think Andrew sent it to me before, so I'll post it under the video once. It, it usually takes about twenty minutes for this thing to go live once we're done. I mean, it's all good. It's all good. But uh, yeah, it's so good talking to you, Mike. Yeah, I know. It was great. Thanks for having me. It was yeah, great totally. to catch up with Andrew and to meet you, Alan. Yeah. yeah. Definitely uh, get you back on and talk more stuff because I think it's kind of, I think colors, obviously, I think color is interesting. I work in color. Um, yeah. It's hard it's to explain, Maya. you know, like it's hard to explain some of the thought process around it, I think, when people ask. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because a lot of times, like, I guess, you know, we, we grow up thinking like of color as like intuitive or something you know like a lot of us uh, even even just like you know when we were taught in school at the beginning of like you know primary school or secondary school and those things it's like it's relatively intuitive and like what's good color or what's like temperature you know sure. you don't really go you don't dive yeah. deep, deep into it so I try yeah. not to go too wild I, you just tell people just have fun like you learn yeah. as you you learn as you make basically yeah so, i mean draw yeah, what moves you yeah yeah draw i mean just do like do like people i'll say one last thing and then i'll take us off but it's basically some artists <laughs> i think worry too much about color and then mm. then they come to a, a, a like a standstill right instead of just like, mm. i get it if you're traditional and you don't want to mess up your painting but if you're digital and you have the option of just playing just play and then fix it as mm. you go along because that's the beauty of digital man you got the undo button Make a new layer, paint on top of it, you know? Yeah. All right, let me take us offline real quick. Uh, thanks for all, all right. people that are watching. Uh, I have to figure out a way to get people to ask more questions, but, you know, of course. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> no worries. I don't know who our next guest is because we don't have one lined. Oh, I know who it is. It's Slays. She's going to be on um, February 3rd. February 3rd, right? Um, okay. Yeah, that would be next Friday. 